Let's look now at the uh, sonographic anatomy of the female pelvis. Looking at the uterus first, it's a muscular, here's the myometrium, hollow organ. It's going to be located posterior to the urinary bladder and anterior to the rectosigmoid colon. And it's going to be composed of three layers. You're going to have the endometrial layer, the myometrial layer, and the serosal layer. The only two layers that you're going to be able to visualize with ultrasound will be the myometrial and the endometrial layers. Here you have the posterior cul-de-sac. This is the most dependent portion of the uh, female pelvis, and this is where fluid is going to initially accumulate. Larger amounts may move along the back of the uterine fundus and may go into the anterior cul-de-sac. In some patients, depending on how they were positioned prior to the scan, you may only find fluid in the anterior cul-de-sac, so don't forget to look in this region when assessing the patient for free fluid. In terms of uterine size, the normal non-gravid uterus is going to be about 7 to 8 centimeters in length. It is going to be about 4 to 5 centimeters in width and about 4 centimeters in AP thickness. Looking at uterine developmental variants, there are two that you need to know. One is going to be a bicorneate uterus, and that's where you're going to have two uterine bodies or horns and one vagina slash cervix. And here you can see that there are two uterine bodies here, so this would be the right and this would be the left horn. As compared to a didelphia uterus where you have two uterine bodies, you would also have two cervices and two vaginas. Let's now look at the transabdominal pelvic exam. The exam should be performed with the patient in the supine position. In terms of transducers, I would recommend using a large footprint 2 to 5 megahertz curvilinear. Something in the range of 2 to 5 megahertz will allow adequate penetration in the average size adult. You could use a small footprint curvilinear transducer or a phased array transducer, but I think it's, you know, it's easier to use a large footprinted transducer for this exam. In terms of patient preparation, a full urinary bladder is going to be ideal, but the exam should still be attempted even if the patient is just voided. And this is usually the case in the ED where people, patients are asked to give urine specimens when they are uh, uh, triaged. Performing the exam, you want to make sure that you scan through the entire uterus. This is essential. Let's first look at the transabdominal sagittal exam. So this exam is going to be performed with the transducer in a sagittal plane with the indicator directed towards the patient's head. The transducer should be placed just cephalad to the pubic symphysis and this will give you this image anterior, posterior, head, foot. Here you've got urinary bladder in the near field you can see some reverberation artifact here which is common. Here you can see the uterus here which is antiverted. You can see the myometrium here and you can see the hyperechoic endometrium here. This is going to be the posterior cul-de-sac and this is going to wrap around here into the anterior cul-de-sac here. Down here you've got the cervix and here you can see the vaginal stripe. Here's an example of a transabdominal sagittal exam where we sweep from side to side surveying the entire uterus. So you can see we're sweeping from one side of the uterus to the other. And again you can see here on this uterus the patient the uterus is antiverted here. You've got urinary bladder Here's vaginal stripe. These are Nabothian cysts here. This is going to be the cul-de-sac here. You can see bowel adjacent to the uterus here, but if there was free fluid, you would see it here. You can see the myometrium here, and you can see the hyperechoic endometrium. So we have a patient with a retroverted uterus. You can see here as we sweep, anterior, posterior, head and foot. Here's urinary bladder. Here's going to be vaginal canal into cervix, now going into the uterus. You can see the myometrium here. You can see here is a sac within the uterine fundal region, but you can see that the uterus is tipped back posteriorly. So this is a 
retroverted uterus and the cul-de-sac is back in here. On the transverse exam, you're going to take the transducer and you're going to place the indicator towards the patient's right. Again, you're going to be just cephalad to the pubic symphysis. This is going to provide you the following image, anterior, posterior, patient's right, patient's left. Here's urinary bladder. Here's a short axis view of the uterus and cul-de-sac will be back here. Here we've got a trans, uh, transverse exam here. You can see that the transducer is going to be angled in a caudal and then cephalad direction, sweeping from the cervical region all the way up to the uterine fundus. This way you are able to fully assess the uterus. Here we have the transverse sweep in the patient uh, with the retroverted uterus. Again, it's going to be the same thing. You're going to angle the transducer so that you're able to fully evaluate uh, from the fundal region all the way down to the cervix. Now let's look at the endovaginal exam. To perform the endovaginal exam, you want to make sure that the patient is in the lithotomy position. This is going to allow you to move the handle of the endovaginal transducer up and down. If you've got the patient flat on a cart, you're going to be limited in your ability to perform the exam. The exam is going to be performed with the endocavitary transducer. Preparation of the transducer will include placing gel on the footprint of the transducer, covering that with a sheath, and then placing surgilube over the sheath. In terms of patient preparation, ideally the patient's urinary bladder should be empty. When you insert the transducer, you want to make sure you start watching the screen the minute you insert the transducer and you're going to start looking for landmarks. The first thing that you may see when you go in is going to be the urinary bladder. You're going to next attempt to find the cervix in the lower uterine segment, which you're seeing right here. You would then need to adjust your depth as needed. You can see here is cervix and lower uterine segment. Here you've got the uterine fundus. You can see some of the endometrial stripe here. And you can see once the lower uterine segment is recognized, you're able to then go from side to side as well as angle the transducer up and down in order to bring the uterus into the central part of the screen. Don't perform this exam the same way that you perform a vaginal speculum exam. If you insert the probe too deeply here, you're not going to be able to fully visualize the uterus, particularly one that's antiverted or one that is retroverted. So once the endocavitary probe passes the introitus, watch the ultrasound uh, screen as you slowly insert the transducer. Um, based on your pelvic exam and or transabdominal exam, um, you should have an idea as to whether or not the uterus is tilted from one side or the other, and this may also be helpful information. But here you can see that if you insert the transducer in too far, you're going to limit your visualization. And if we think about fixes for a vaginal speculum exam when we can't see the cervix, we tend to put the uh, speculum in further into the posterior cul-de-sac, hoping to get the cervix to drop in. If we use that same type of a logic here when doing the endocavitary exam, we're going to actually be counterproductive. We're going to end up with limited visualization and we're going to cause the patient discomfort. On the endovaginal sagittal exam, you're going to end up with the following orientation. Here you've got the transducer and the vaginal canal, so this is caudal direction. Here you're going to have the cephalad direction because you're, a you're aiming the beam up towards the patient's head. With the indicator at the 12 o'clock position, meaning your thumb is pointed up to the ceiling, this is going to be anterior, this is going to be posterior. Here you get a nice view of this antiverted uterus. Here you've got the medium level echogenicity of the myometrium. Here you've got the central endometrial cavity here. Here you've got the posterior cul-de-sac and here you've got the anterior cul-de-sac. Now you can see that you get much better resolution here with the endovaginal exam as, composed, as uh, opposed to the uh, um, transabdominal exam. However, 
These exams should not be used in exclusion of each other. They should be used together. I always recommend, regardless of how early you think the patient is, start off with the transabdominal exam. Since you're using a lower frequency transducer, you're going to get a broader view of the pelvic anatomy. It's possible with this high frequency coned in image here that you could miss pathology. So remember, don't use the one exam in exclusion of the other. Start with the transabdominal exam. If that gives you your answer, you can stop at that point. If you don't have your answer, then move on to the endovaginal exam. Remember, scan the whole uterus. So here we've got an antiverted uterus here. This is caudal, cephalad, anterior, posterior. Here you've got myometrium. Here you've got endometrium. Here's the posterior cul-de-sac here. What you're going to do is you're going to take the transducer and you're going to sweep from side to side. In the sagittal plane, by bringing the transducer towards the patient's left thigh, you're going to visualize the right side of the uterus. By bringing the transducer towards the patient's right thigh, you're going to visualize the left side of the uterus. But it's important, just like on the transabdominal, that you scan the entire uterus. In addition to sweeping from side to side on the sagittal exam, you're going to bring the handle up and by doing that in an antiverted uterus, you're going to get a better look at the lower uterine segment and cervical region, as well as the posterior cul-de-sac. So you've got caudal, cephalad, anterior, posterior. If you want to visualize the uterine fundus better in a patient with an antiverted uterus on the sagittal exam, you drop the handle down and that will give you this view. Here's caudal, cephalad, anterior, posterior. You're seeing some urinary bladder here, but here you've got a nice view of the uterine fundus. Here's the myometrium, and here is the endometrium. Let's take a look at these two patients. On the left here, you've got a patient with a retroverted uterus. Here's caudal, cephalad, anterior, posterior. Here you've got the lower uterine segment here, and you've got as you follow the endometrial uh, cavity back, you can see that it is going in a posterior direction, so this is a retroverted uterus. Here you've got um, caudal, cephalad, anterior, posterior, and you can see following the endometrial stripe up to the fundus here, it's in an anterior direction, so this is an antiverted uterus. The endovaginal transverse or coronal exam is going to be performed by taking the transducer indicator and going from the 12 o'clock position where your thumb would be pointed up at the ceiling to the 9 o'clock position where you have the indicator directed towards the patient's right thigh. And that's going to provide you with the following image. The transducer is in the vaginal canal, so this is caudal. The transducer is shooting the beam up towards the patient's head, so this is going to be cephalad. This is patient's right, and this is patient's left. Here you have a short axis view of the uterus. You've got the surrounding myometrium, and here you can see the centrally located endometrium. When we look at the endovaginal transverse exam, again, you're going to have to sweep in order to evaluate the uterus in its entirety. So when you're in the transverse plane with the indicator towards the 9 o'clock position or the patient's right thigh, you're going to end up bringing the handle up and then down in order to fully interrogate the uterus. You can see in a patient with an antiverted uterus, by bringing the handle down, you're going to evaluate the uterine fundus. And by bringing the handle up, you're going to be shooting the beam more posteriorly and you'll be going into the lower uterine and cervical region. So again, make sure when you perform this exam that you do a full sweep going from the cervical region all the way through the fundus.